Hey everybody, Phil Slash Polly going here. Welcome to part two of a purist's guide to character building. Picking up exactly where we left off in the last one, we just kind of ran around, collected some initial goodies, took out the Taurus demon, laid a nice foundation for our character. So I'm going to jump through these crates, and then we are going to jump right into it. Segway. So what is on the docket for this episode? Well, I'm going to head straight for the Moonlight Butterfly Forest and collect a couple gubbins that are essential to this character. I'm going to grab my Partisan. I'm going to grab the Wolf Ring. I cannot remember if I grab the Grass Crest Shield, but if I do, I shall absolutely point it out. Um, coming down here, here's a little tip I always do. I always stick my head out right there. Just pull a little turtle because it triggers the dragon flyby. Look, there he goes. Save you a couple of seconds when you're down here hamming around with Solaire, I guess. Listen to him blubber on about the sun and God knows what else. And actually... Let me take a second to go off on Solaire, because I do not understand why people love this guy. He is a beloved NPC. Whenever you say something bad about him, people just come out of the woodwork and say, No, leave Solaire alone. He sucks. He's a moron that is completely useless in every boss fight you take him into. He's comp He dies instantly against the Gaping Dragon. Pretty useless against the Gargoyles. Pretty useless against Ornstein and Smo and the centipede, centipede Demon, aside from being another target. And I wonder if that's why people like him. Because he's kind of a body double, he's a crash test dummy, takes a little pressure off of you. Or maybe it's a lore thing, he does have some pretty interesting lore in terms of uh, speculation around the firstborn son of Gwyn and all that jazz. But man, I'm glad he dies if you let him die with that little sunlight maggot exchange. It's gratifying to kill Solaire, to me. Anyways, I came down here to activate this shortcut. Um, one of the things I always do is take the time to activate shortcuts. I am not that confident in my ability to not do something stupid, like run off a cliff or just randomly die to some throng of enemies accidentally because uh, I wasn't maybe 100% focused or something like that. So I always take the time to kick open these ladders or open these doors, go a little bit out of the way. Another thing to point out, I always take the top path coming past here, getting past the Hellkite Drake. I always take the bridge so I can get access to the bonfire, um, altar of sunlight and all that kind of thing. That's that's just kind of my preference. I always go up here. Even though it takes a little bit longer, you have to wait for the dragon. Uh, and I guess while I'm up here waiting for the bridge too, I should point something out that the more astute of you may have noticed. Wow, that was an ill-timed gesture. <laughs> uh, hope this doesn't backfire. Um, some of you may think, Hey, your character looks slightly different than she did on episode one. Uh, she is. I had to start over. I broke my build. In a moment of sheer idiocy, I got my... So the, the partisan, which I'm going to use with this character, requires 13 strength and 12 dex. For whatever reason, I had those two stats reversed in my head. And I put 12 in strength and 13 in in dex and I was going to keep just the absolute bare minimum to use that with this play th playthrough um, so you know I wasted a point throwing it into something I didn't need so for all my talk in the last episode about you know plan your characters and have your first 20 levels spec'd out and all that kind of thing uh, didn't follow my own advice so I had to uh, just kind of replay up to this point didn't take that long it took 20 minutes and I did exactly the same thing I killed the undead merchant and, and retraced my steps exactly uh, but just to be transparent this is not exactly the same character from the first one. So I'll just blaze through here. I always take the steps over here. If you haven't seen this tactic, there's a, there's a hollow running along the floor next to us, racing over to close this gate. Uh, if you come up the side here, you can sort of get in front of him. He'll he'll shut you off from the boar and the rest of the hollows down there. You can kind of bypass a little chunk of a level. A level. Nice little shortcut. You know, there's nothing really down there aside from the mystery key, maybe a couple of soul items, and we've got the master key, so we don't need that thing. That's the uh, key that actually lets us free Law Trek, which we will do in just a moment. Uh, but I said I would point out some things about the master key, so neat. Um, I probably should talk about the Undead Merchant, too. I mentioned him just a second ago, and I killed him. And in the last episode, I was talking about some very high-level stuff and just general strategies and whatnot, but I failed to give any kind of context on this character, and it was pointed out in the comments by Snoopy, thank you very much, that, uh, you know, that, that merchant, if you don't have the DLC, is your only source of Lloyd's talismans in the game. So if you kill him, not uh, you can't get those things until New Game Plus. I plan on taking this character to New Game Plus. I'm going to play all the way through the game with this character because I want to be able to host in the Berg and host in a couple other places, uh, host in the Butterfly Forest, which I'm about to go kill. I'm on my way to kill right now. Uh, so I am intending to take this character to New Game Plus. So that merchant will be back. I'll be able to get my Lloyd's Talismans. If you are doing just sort of a, a one pass and trying to be as quick as possible, be a little bit... Uh, 
be a little bit thoughtful on whether or not you want to kill that undead merchant for his Uchi Katana, whatever it is, because unless you go visit Chester in Ulusil, you can't get those Lloyd's Talismans. Very helpful for hunting those twitchy hosts. So I shall use my powers as a cleric to give myself a little top up there on the health, and then go take on this Baronite Knight. A lot of times in the parish, I will bother fighting all of the enemies because there's a chance that they will drop those Titanite shards, especially if you've got a humanity up in your little meter uh, for better drop rates and things like that. For whatever I don't have in terms of shards, I will go buy from uh, Andre. Ooh, that was a nice little drop. I'm not going to be able to use a great sword with this character, but neat. Uh, yeah, I will buy the balance, the remaining shards from Andre, but I mean, you know, any little bit can really help you out, especially early on like this when you're trying to level quickly. 800 souls can be the difference between a level or not a level, or buying some other gear and not some other gear, so, I mean, if these guys drop shards, awesome, it's just less cash out of our pockets, less soul currencies down the road. Uh, so I'm coming down here now to the blacksmith to activate the bonfire and then head straight to the butterfly forest. Another thing I want to make sure I do is learn that gesture from Andre, Joy. You know, it's it's always so frustrating when you start off as a cleric because they have no way of expressing joy or excitement. So getting the hurrah from Andre or getting the joy emote from Domnal is so important. I love the gestures in this game. They are so cool and so fun and I think they are just so well rendered. And it is frustrating not frustrating not being able to express excitement uh, with a cleric, with a starting cleric. I think that probably says a lot about the life of a cleric that they don't even have a means of expressing um, joy. What a sad, sad life. But so we're headed down here for the forest. I'm going to completely ignore this Titanite demon. Um, it is going to take me far too long to uh, take him out with my low-level character. I also went human um, at the bonfire because I'm going to need some help on the Moonlight Butterfly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to summon Beatrice, so I need to kind of blaze through this forest quickly because if, uh, I, I am very likely to get griefed. But... Um, if you have never taken on the Moonlight Butterfly as a low-level melee character, my god, it sucks. Because you have to wait for it to, uh, you know, spam its magic attacks, its little orbs and its little needles and the beams and all that kind of thing. And every now and again, it comes down and lands on the bridge and you can wail on it, but you are not strong enough to do uh, a ton of damage to it. And so, you know, you can use your fire bombs, which I think I do when I finally get there. But you just chip away at it, and it ends up being a long, boring boss fight. So, I'm going to uh, enlist a little help from my witch friend and take out the butterfly quicker. I'm also not going to activate or rest at this bonfire up here. Um, you know, you can activate it, but I'm not going to rest at it. Because as soon as I beat the Moonlight Butterfly, I want to be able to Homeward Bone back all the way to the parish. It's pretty convenient. Because I'll have scored my Divine Ember, um, I'll have souls from the Butterfly, so I can just warp immediately back to uh, Andre, and then uh, take my Partisan that I'm going to procure on this run all the way up to Divine. Or at least Divine Ready. If you don't have any green Titanite Shards in which to actually ascend it to Divine... You'll at least be ready for it, because in the very, 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 very near future, we're heading down into Blight Town. We're going to do a little farming on those leeches uh, who dropped the Green Titanite Shards. So, you know, get our ducks in a row early on. Uh, this is another part that's really <laughs> pretty irritating early on, just being, being weak, being underpowered, trying to get through these trees. Because you just have to sit here and, you know, hit them for your 49 damage and wait for your stamina. And it's kind of like, good lord, just let me through, tree. I don't understand why they really even put these trees there. You know, maybe they should, if they can't attack you, they're just kind of there to be a nuisance. They should have made them elusive, like the illusory walls where you could just kind of run through them. What is the point of forcing you to sit there and hack at them? Because uh, it puts up damage, but they don't do anything weird. I thought I remember hearing something that once upon a time those trees were going to be able to attack you, and I don't know if it just didn't make it into the game or whatever. Uh, but we're running up here to grab the wolf ring. I am going to completely ignore this uh, uh, stone giant as well. I'm just going to let him wake up, run right by him, grab the wolf ring, and then jump off the ledge onto the area below. I don't actually know if it's quicker uh, to turn around and go back the way you came 
or jump off this way and then circle around again. I always kind of circle around because when you run up that uh, when you run up that little pathway to get the wolf ring, the stone giant wakes up uh, the one that we just saw. The other one over by the ledge with the frog rays wakes up as well. So to head back, you potentially run into one of these giants that will twop you. Uh, and this low, this early in the game, that's uh, that can be a little bit dicey. So I'm gonna go grab my partisan coming around this way. I just made a big loop. Take my little path, and if I remember correctly, I have a dick of a time with this uh, tree lizard too. I think, yup, this is it. Look at this, we are just trading hits. That was awful, and I am poisoned uh, as account of it, or because of it. At least I picked up a purple blossom from uh, one of those treants, I think they're called. So I can heal myself and, and not die, I don't have to run back to a bonfire or something like that. But, we have procured our partisan. And, uh, as I was talking about in the last one, kind of uh, mapping out the route to get your gear, picking the weapons that you want to pick up along the way as a purist because you don't have your mules and all that kind of thing. I knew from the start that I wanted to get a partisan. So it was pretty important to me to pick up this partisan as quickly as possible so that I can start using it, I can start getting used to it. One of the one of the purposes of making this character too is I've never messed with the partisan. I've used plenty of spears. I actually really like spears, but I've never messed around with the partisan. And I am really curious about those R2s it has, those sweeping R2s, like sort of a, a hybrid spear, uh, almost Claymore-esque type thing. So we shall give our regards to Beatrice. After a couple of attempts, I'm apparently having problems getting that okay. And I think she does a pretty good job of uh, popping off this stone giant down there too. I often don't summon Beatrice because the Moonlight Butterfly is a fairly weak boss. Uh, unless you take them on early like this. So I'm not terribly familiar with Beatrice as an NPC. She's got cool clothes, if nothing else. But I was pretty impressed when I saw this, when she uh, just pops off a heavy soul arrow and takes down that stone giant. I was going, all right, Beatrice, nice hat. And we're going to employ our, our newly procured hurrah. I wish it was huzzah. I like huzzah better than hurrah. And this coming up is a pretty straight boss fight. The Moonlight Butterfly does not pose that much of a threat. And we'll let Beatrice do most of the work. We'll come in for an assist at the end with our black fire bombs. Uh, but I, I should jump back too because I was mentioning uh, upgrading to the Divine Path. One thing I neglected to do on my first playthrough that I believe I did on this one, maybe I'll append it at the end as sort of a, as an appendix is there is a green titanite shard in New Londo that when you're doing your... I made a suicide run to grab the Firekeeper soul um, and just pick up some soul items and stuff down in New Londo. There is a green titanite shard down there too that if you blaze through all of the ghosts, you go through the first fog gate and uh, right near the steps to where you open the, the seal once you get the key when you release the waters and all that kind of thing, there's a green titanite shard you can pick up. And I've gotten in the habit of picking that up, especially if I'm going to go on the uh, like a divine path or a magic path, enchanted, whatever it is, because it's readily available. It's right there. You can just go snag it quickly. Um, and it allows you to ascend your weapon. You'll only get it to you know the first, the very first level. But if you buy yourself a weapon smith box, when you go down into... Blight Town and grab some other green shards, or when you buy them from the merchant in Sens, you're already ascended, so it saves you a trip back to the blacksmith. You can just upgrade your, your shit continuously from there, so that's pretty handy. So there we go, Moonlight Butterfly with a nice little bit of help from Beatrice, and I'm going to go grab my Ember, and then Homeward Bone back to Andre. I'm going to pause for just a moment and grab a sip of coffee. Delicious. But that kind of concludes the run through the Moonlight Butterfly Forest. We picked up our Partisan, which is going to be our primary weapon with this character. We got our Ember. We got our Wolf Ring. I did not pick up the Grass Crest Shield. I apologize for not showing you that. But I'm not going to use it with this character. They're, this character is going to have pretty low endurance because they doesn't have uh, a lot of uh, restrictions on carrying capacity. So I don't need high endurance. I'm also going to use a lot of Miracles. So endurance isn't that big a deal. I'm going to rock the Crown of Dusk, so I'll be a little bit vulnerable to magic. So I think for the most part, I am going to carry the Crest Shield to try and offset some of that magic vulnerability. So no Grass Crest Shield. I just opted out of it. And that ties back in with what we were talking about earlier in terms of gra gathering just the equipment that you know you're going to use, trying to be efficient with it, and not having to bother... Uh, you know, those, those compulsions to go around and pick up every single little item. Our goal with this character is to 
you know, go through the game, have fun playing through the game, but get him, her, her, sorry, PvP ready as quickly as possible. So with that, our partisan is ready to go. I did pick up that green shard, so I will absolutely uh, put this at the end of this and, and just kind of show you that run through New okay. Londo to get that one. So now that we have our partisan upgraded to the Divine Path, I'm going to sink a couple of levels so I can actually use it. I still don't have my stats up to snuff. And then... I'll also pick up that uh, weapon smith box, so when I come across green shards along the way, I'm just ready to go. I can just upgrade, 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 and not have to come back here and ascend the thing. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be mid-rolling here too, yeah. So I'm going to sink some points, I've got some uh, allocated souls to, s to spend in endurance, despite the fact that I just said endurance is not that big a deal to this character. But I do want to be able to fast roll, because I don't know what it is, I have a dickens of a time playing with mid-roll characters. I know it is legit. I just cannot play it for shit. Nice little poem there. And it's, it you know, there's a lot of guys out in the PvP world that have a lot of success mid-rolling characters. I was actually just watching a very similar series from War Child doing a little bit of research. He, he did a Let's Play, kind of taking you through the process of building his war build, which is a mid-rolling build. Uh, you know, War Child is no slouch in the PvP community. Uh, always mid-rolling. So, I mean, it's I'm not saying it's it's... Not viable, I'm just saying it's not for me. So I'm feeling pretty good about the progress of our character so far. You know, it's been maybe 30, 40 minutes in the game. We've got the gear we want to use. It's already on the divine path, which we're going to take. Um, I need to add some miracles to the mix. But I've got a pretty good start for the characters. What I'm worried about is I am in human form. I feel pretty lucky to have gotten through the Moonlight Butterfly Forest without uh, getting griefed. Maybe I was still a little bit too low, connections couldn't catch me, whatever it was, but we're in the parish now. I got a nagging suspicion as soon as I step out from that arch into the parish proper, I'm gonna get invaded by a griefer and get griefed into oblivion. You know, these guys that are use the mule and they're at level 10 and go out with their plus five lightning battle axes or plus five, you know, chaos butcher knives or whatever it is. And are just looking for backstabs or one-shots on other low-level players. These bully types. I'm not going to say too much about that because I'm sure everybody's come across them. They exist. It sucks. But it is reality. There's two, from what I understand, schools of thought in terms of leveling up your characters. The first is to get an elemental weapon as quickly as possible and sink all of your points up front, your levels up front, into vitality or endurance. The idea being, you get healthy, you get vigorous quickly, and you rely on the elemental weapon for damage so that you can go out and stand a chance against these griefer types. The other way is to sort of make your character into a lesser version of what he or she is going to be. You know, you, you spread your points in a distribution that's in line with uh, what they're going to be down the road. I'm actually taking the second approach. I'll talk about the first one first, though. So this elemental um, vitality endurance one, it is absolutely valid. I see a ton of videos out there on how to, you know, Ariac has some great videos on how to be overleveled in 10 minutes or overleveled in 25 minutes. And Tech Phantom has a really great run on how to get a fire claymore in half an hour or something like that. Um, Martyrs on his playthrough series from like May of 2012 in the days of the bottomless box glitch advocates the same thing. You know, put put your points in vitality and endurance first, use your elemental weapons weapons and bring up your scaling stats last so that you can have a, a fighting chance with these griefer types that come in and invade you. I take the other approach. I just sort of accept the fact that yep, I'm probably going to be griefed and yep, I'm probably going to get one shot BS um, and that is just part of it sucks but you know part of it because i want to start getting used to the subtleties of the play style as early as possible you know if you do the um, you do the endurance vitality elemental weapon thing all of your playthroughs become fairly homogenous you are a melee character until very late in the game when you start bringing up your scaling stats and there's a lot of subtleties when you start playing things like spell swords or, um, you know, battle clerics and things like that. Down to things like the order in which you attune your spells. And I like to have as much time with that as possible. I like to really get acquainted, as I keep saying, with the character. I'm going to enlist a little help here. Um, get acquainted with the character. So 
I don't have this awkward phase when I actually hit PvP to where it's sort of like, all right, what what was the second miracle in the stack? And I, I'm, I'm toggling out all my weapons at the wrong moments and all that kind of thing. So the learning process I like to, to tackle up front. And it also gives you a lot more variety in your playthroughs too. You know, we are trying to get this character PvP ready, but one of the reasons being a purist is so great is because you get to play through the game. And I don't want to play through the game as a melee character every time. I like to mix it up a little bit. So, from here, now that I can use my partisan, I'm going to start putting points in... I'm going to start putting points in attunement. I'm going to start putting points in faith. So that I can start using miracles and sprinkling those in. And sort of rounding out the character um, in correlation to what they're going to be which is going to be faith and spears miracles and spears and this guy that i called upon is actually a uh, reverse griefer an anti-griefer he pops off a grave lord sword dance here in the next little bit uh so he's kind of a uh, benevolent twink um before i jump off the subject of griefers uh one more time the other i guess the other benefit too is a lot of times these guys just suck right the only thing they have going for them is the fact that they've got these over leveled weapons uh that can hit you pretty hard for the most part they're not that good i'm not that good at pvp but i can survive ish a lot of these grief attempts because most of the time these guys just suck Not all of them, and let me very let me be very clear too. I'm not talking about my my helper phantom here. You know, this guy's using his powers for good. Um, but a lot of times, I don't I don't know. It just doesn't seem that fun, right? To go out there and just just beat up on starting players and things like that. I mean, I, I figure a lot of the PvP superstars won't do that or don't do that because it's just not that fun. At least it's not that fun for me. I have done it. That's that's why I'm able to speak to it. I did it in Demon Souls. Actually, I would go out and be at you know level seven and get my plus five fatal s stock or something like that and then do the whole invisibility spell and just sneak up on people and backstab and stuff like that and i did it you know for about 10 minutes and it was like this is boring as fuck so actually you know maybe keeping an open mind about it i'm gonna give this guy a little space on the ladder i don't want to crawl up in his ass but you know, just kind of being open-minded about it. If you guys are out there griefing, don't, well, like, what is what is the charm in it? What's the fun in it? Maybe maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I'm just missing something. Um, being on the receiving end of it, it just sucks. But yeah, let me know if you're doing it. Just what's uh, what's up with it? What's where are the good times? What am I doing wrong? So with that, I got some help from my uh, from Apollo or Apollo. Got some help from Solaire, the moron. I'm gonna go take on the gargoyles. I should point out too, like through a lot of that where I was talking, I, I was bombing around killing enemies in the parish. I was actually hoping one of those hollows would drop me a hollow soldier waist cloth, which I am gonna wear with this character, at least for a little bit. Hate the way it looks, but you cannot argue with a inexpensive seven poise. That's actually what I was doing, just kind of running around where, where it looked like I might have been just stalling. Oop, a little hot. My cleric robes caught on fire. Nonetheless, our buddy, has it well in hand. And that will do it for the parish. Pick up my little sunlight medal here. That'll do it for the episode as well. Uh, like I said, I will tack on that appendix at the end, the run through New Londo to get that green Titanite shard, the initial one, to let us uh, ascend our weapon, save ourselves a trip to the blacksmith down the way. I'm not going to talk over that one, so I'll just uh, let it play at the end. And as always, comments, feedback, very, very, very welcome. Uh, let me know what you liked about this one. Let me know what you do different or what I did wrong. Let me know what I did wrong about the uh, griefing, too. <laughs> tell, me, tell me what I'm missing if you're out there griefing and just having a blast with it. But uh, I think that is going to do it. Thanks, as always, for watching. Thanks for listening. Give me a thumb up, thumb down. Feedback, man. All good. See you guys next time. Bye.